My soul is now thrilling with joy it is filling when I think of what's over life see our loved ones are waiting they're now congregating beyond the sunset for me Jesus standing on the shore by the landing beyond the sunset for me. Look around you, they're all gone Would be easy to surrender When you think you're all alone Then I bow my head in sadness As I ponder what to do I've been in God's army for so long and I've been 
soldier true Then I hear a voice from heaven Saying, Pilgrim, it is I Lift your head and take to courage And turn your eyes toward the sky Come out from among the world And I will set you free My soul was so heavy And blinded I could not see But praise the Lord When I called on him My spirit he set free Set free Set free Set free Set free My soul has been set free Set free Now I can shout Tell the world about The land of Calvary Well if you're in the valley And you'll have a victory Call on the Lord, your soul, he will set free. Well, when you're in the valley, and it seems you don't have a friend, if you'll just call on Jesus, on him you can depend. He is my strength and refuge, my rock he'll always be. And when I face temptation, his grace will follow me. Set free, set free, set free, my soul has been set free, set free, now I can shout, tell the world about the land of Calvary, well, if you're in the valley, and don't have the victory, just follow your knees, call on the Lord, your soul, he will set free. I have faced the storms that rage around me. We're not used to this guitar, so we'll get it right.
When I knelt down at an altar of prayer And Christ saved my soul It makes me feel good To know I am saved I've been bought with a price I've been bought with a price No man could ever pay No man could ever pay Well, glory to God Well, glory to God when this life is over, when this life is over, I will live with the redeemed in heaven someday. It won't be long till I will leave this world behind me. Bound for that land where all the streets are paved with pure gold. There see the saints and loved ones gone on before me and there at the throne i'll see god the father and christ his own son it makes me feel good to know i am saved i've been bought with a price i've been bought with a price no man could ever pay no man well, glory to God, well, glory to God, when this life is over, when this life is over, I will live with the redeemed in heaven someday. It makes me feel good to know I am saved. I've been bought with a price, I've been bought with a price, no man could ever Well, glory to God, when this life is over, when this life is over, I will live with the redeemed in heaven someday. I will live with the redeemed in heaven someday. will tremble when your eyes behold a little child down on her knees praying for your soul as she says now I lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I to die before I wake. There's only one thing I ask of you. Jesus, save my mommy too. So we can be together again someday. gentle voice from heaven told her of her sins until she opened up her heart and let the Savior in as she prayed now I lay me down to sleep I 
pray the Lord my soul to keep that if I should die before I wake it's so good to know I'm saved thank you Lord for a child who prayed that we would be together again someday I know we will be together again someday Amen Bless you. Holy Spirit's coming down Thank you Jesus when peace like a river attend my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot that glorious thought my sin not impart but the whole it's been nailed to his cross and I bear it no more pray church all my life and That's right. about now a lot of people thinking is he going to preach a whole message? <laughs> some of you thinking what have I got myself into? Wonder if I can slip out in a little bit without anybody noticing me. It's alright. You'll hear me. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of thoughts goes into the people's minds. I know them all the reason I know them because I've been there. 
See, so that's why I know him. So, yes, I am going to preach according to the will of the Lord. So, sit back and relax, and I'm going to preach a whole message. If the Lord gives it, uh, according to He gives, so it'll probably be 9.30 or 15 or 10. I usually don't hardly go over 30 minutes. See, when you start late, I found out a long time ago, when you start late, people keep looking at the clock. They think He'll probably just go short. But I'm not tonight. I'm not. I got a good message, and I'm going to give it. And uh, I'll do my best to give it from the Lord. And uh, I'll go according to what the Lord gives. And I wouldn't try to overpreach you whatsoever. If you get so you can't listen, you don't do me any good. In fact, stand up and say one verse of amazing grace, and that will help you to rest just a little bit. If you don't listen to me, you won't get the message. One verse of amazing grace or victory in Jesus, whatever you want to say, just to rest your soul, just a few moments. Amazing grace of God. Turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms 23 for the scripture lessons tonight. Book of Psalms 23, we want one verse out of there. Uh, we know Psalms, it's hard to quote a one verse out of Psalms. You quote Psalms 23. Uh, in fact, I couldn't even tell you how many verses it had of many hundreds of times that I quoted it until I just now look down and six verses. But I want one verse out of Psalms 23 and we'll bring you a message according to the will of the Lord. Psalms 23 and verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come to Thee. We know, Lord, that it's late. And, Lord, we know that it takes a special effort, God, and special attention of the people to listen when it gets past 9 o'clock for some reason in the house of God. We don't know why. But, Lord, we pray that, the, that we may sit back and, Lord, listen to the words that you'll give, Lord, if we do our best. And, Lord God, we ask that thou will anoint us, that thou will touch our hearts, Lord. And we know, God, and when we say this and when we ask that thou will anoint us, we say it not by repetition. Uh, how about, Lord, we say it believing and asking uh, and desiring, uh, uh, for we know beyond the shadow of doubt uh, uh, that our message can be nothing uh, uh, without thy power behind it. Uh, uh, so, Lord, take these thoughts that you've given us. Uh, oh, Lord, they've been so many and they've been good. <laughs> I've enjoyed them. And Lord, we pray you may touch the hearts of those. And there's surely someone here that needs prayer. And someone surely, Lord, is either lost or backslidden or in trouble. And that their peace of mind is not there. And Lord, we pray that thou will touch. And we ask in thy name, dear Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, Psalms 23 and 2. Uh, he said, He maketh me to lie down uh, in green pastures. Uh, he leadeth me uh, uh, beside the still waters. Uh, uh, the, what I want to preach on tonight uh, is the greenest grass. Uh, the greenest grass uh, of this. Uh, and now the thought came to me. Uh, and you all heard of the saying all my life. I heard it. Uh, uh, the grass is always greener uh, uh, on the other side. Uh, uh, they say that. But that's not always true. The grass is always greener. And I think it's important in this life, brother, that we find the greenest grass. I preach a message a couple of times, a few times, about life treasures. How that we go through life and we'll look for those great big old blessings, those great big old treasures. When we see them, are reckless work done. And we wait and we wait and we wait. 
we wait uh, on those. Uh, and they don't come too often just to tell you the truth. Uh, uh, very few people uh, in this world uh, actually see uh, uh, a miracle or someone was saved just in the nick of time. Uh, or see something, uh, uh, brother, that you know uh, that God answered. You'll see them occasionally, uh, uh, but very few. Uh, and what I preach uh, and what I teach is, uh, uh, brother, enjoy the small things as you go. Because uh, I assure you uh, uh, that whole bunch of small treasures will outweigh one big one. Yeah. I got up this morning up ten minutes after five. I say I don't worry about home. I worked the roughest job I've worked in two or three years today. Every stitch was well on me. I back in a whole well and it was dirty and hot and filthy I, and burned my place. I, I worked hard. I, I got up this morning I, and I got up my feet hit the floor I, and the thought I, the greenest grass I, and I kept that through the day. I, I brother the greenest grass I, I'm looking. I, I brother I want to make sure uh, that I stay uh, on the greenest grass. See, the thing about humans are uh, that we're always, uh, wherever we go, uh, whatever we do, uh, uh, we feel that we are going towards the greenest grass. Uh, now, sometimes we know, uh, especially when you're young, uh, uh, the greenest pastors on the other side uh, will get you in trouble many times. Uh, the things that look green, uh, uh, the things a pastor that looks greener, uh, it always, uh, uh, sometimes it's not always green. We know that. Uh, uh, but sometimes uh, uh, we carry that. Uh, in our Christian life also uh, that we become burdened down uh, we become, become weary uh, and we become uh, a brother that God cannot use us uh, because we don't recognize uh, the greenest grass the greenest grass I hear people say so many times that I would like to be uh, in the days of old. Uh, see, we're always, uh, oh, so often the times, uh, I'm looking back, uh, looking someplace else. Uh, oh, if I could only be rich, uh, if I only had money, I would give uh, uh, to the world. Uh, if I only had an automobile, uh, I would hold people to church. Uh, if I only had this, uh, I would give milk to people. If I had milk, uh, if I only had, uh, we live happy. As I spoke about the song that they sang a few years ago that used to be popular, uh, about the songs about winning. Uh, oh, if I could do this, uh, if I had a, a talent, uh, if I had a team, uh, if I had the opportunity, uh, uh, then I would go all over the world uh, uh, winning souls for Christ. Uh, and we'll spend all our life saying, Lord, uh, I would go all over the world for you, uh, uh, winning souls for Christ. Uh, and the song reminded us uh, uh, to tell it to someone next door. Always saying if I could go, uh, I hit the world. Uh, I would go, I would go, I would go. Uh, and the point is, uh, we don't go next door. Uh, oftentimes we don't go next door. It's not where the green pastures are. We need to recognize the greenest grass. Uh, our brother, if you're going to be happy in this life, uh, this would be good. Uh, even if you wasn't a Christian, that you need to recognize the greenest grass. Uh, but what well, I assure you, uh, our brother, the only true peace, uh, the only guaranteed peace, uh, I can come through Christianity. Uh, because if you have that Christianity, uh, and you're on par for God, uh, and you have what God wants you to have, uh, and you're for the love of God, uh, you have found, uh, and you will recognize, uh, and you'll know where the green grass is. The greenest grass. I wish I could have lived in the olden days, they say. I wish I could have lived in the olden days. I think of Eve in the olden days. That's a long time back. Eve looked and she saw greener pastures. She saw greener grass. She saw a tree. All the other was good. They was wonderful. They was marvelous. The garden was good. Nothing so beautiful when God said he created. He looked back and it was good. On the first day and the second day and the third, it was good. It was good. He made man. He said, it's very good. Uh, uh, brother, everything was good. Uh, uh, but the grass was greener. Just on the other side appeared to be. Uh, and he partook of that. Uh, and brother, she began to recognize uh, when God came down uh, and put the curse upon her. Uh, when God came down uh, and put death upon all men. Uh, I realized at that time, uh, uh, brother, the grass was not greener. Uh, that she came from the greenest grass.
The greenest grass we need to recognize it will save us from a lot of trouble. Huh? Oh, Brother old Lot. Huh? Oh, Lot down in Genesis 13. Huh? Oh, that's a beautiful story in every Bible reader knows this. Huh? Uh, even before I go to it, what I'm going to say, huh? I'm going to say it anyway. It gives me a blessing. It gives me a blessing. It gives me a blessing. Abraham looked. Abram at this time looked. And his... A uh, herdsman, his uh, tribe began to uh, strive against Lot's tribe. They was gray in numbers. Huh? And Lot's tribe and Lot's herdsmen. Huh? And Abram's herd, herdsmen huh? uh, began to strive one with another. Huh? And oh, Abram, huh? uh, brother, if any man knew huh, where the green grass was, huh? Abraham knew the greenest grass of all. Huh? If any man knew, huh? uh, brother, he waited on the Lord. Huh? He was 75 years old huh? when God said, huh? uh, brother, by thy seed huh? were all the earth be blessed. Huh? He was a hundred years old when he received the promise. Yeah. Waited because he knew where the green grass was, brother. He never ventured out. Huh? He knew where it was. Huh? But he looked. Huh? And he looked at all the plains and they had to separate. Huh? And Abram said unto Lot, Lift, there'll be no strife. Huh? I pray thee between me and thee, huh? between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, we are the, are we, huh? for we are brethren. Huh? He knew huh? he was on the greenest grass. Huh? He knew huh? where it was. Huh? And old Abram said with all his heart, huh? and let me tell you, huh? he could tell the devil. Huh? Abram was a man huh? that had much cattle huh? and much goods, huh? which meant he knew what he, he knew huh? what he was doing. He didn't make a mistake when he looked around. Huh? Brother, he looked huh? and he looked down through there huh? and he looked huh? and all the plain of Jordan, huh? how it was well watered huh? everywhere before the Lord, huh? just like the Garden of Eden. It was so great. Huh? Abram, huh? Brother, he was a man of God. Huh? He was an intelligent man huh? on business. He knew where the cattle would do the best. But he knew where the grass was the grass. He said, Lot, you take whatever you want. Lot is like us. He didn't know where the greenest grass was. He thought he knew. It looked better. It looked greener. It looked more healthy. It looked like he could increase more and more. And he went. And the book of Peter tells us. And Peter to himself, it said, even just Lot, his rice is so vexed with the filthy conversation. Solomon and Gomorrah became so wicked. Huh? How, brother, the green grass wasn't green no more. Huh? How the green grass huh? had begun to wither. Huh? The green grass had begun to fade away. Huh? And we make mistake huh? after mistake. Huh? Uh, people after people huh? I've seen come through the house of God huh? and they thought the grass was greener somewhere else. I told you the other night, when why are we failing? Huh? How that the reason somebody leaves a huh? church is because their heart, huh? how brother, is not huh? in the place it should be. Huh? Their heart's desire huh? is not to serve God huh? with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Huh? Their heart's desire huh? is not to love thy neighbor huh? as thyself. A huh? huh, brother, huh? their heart's desire goes somewhere else. The only way you'll leave the Lord when your heart's desire goes somewhere else. Huh? Of these things. Huh? Uh, brother, when they begin to see grass over here, huh? uh, the reason they go over there huh? is because they can't recognize huh? the greenest grass. Ask me if I want to be a Christian. I was a Christian. I, I was saved 20 some years ago. Huh? Uh, brother, I didn't ever cuss in my life. Huh? Never took the Lord's name in vain in my life. Huh? I thank the Lord. Never have. Huh? Uh, brother, I thank the Lord for that. Huh? Uh, but you ask me, huh? do I want to return huh? uh, back from whence I come? Huh? In no way. Yeah. And at the time I was saved, I was very innocent. I really was. Never had, I was about 12 years old, never said a dirty word. Uh, I never, never did anything wrong. My uh, brother is wrong that you could see outwardly. Uh, but brother, let me tell you something. Uh, the power of God came on me, uh, and I remembered. Uh, the church was turned around that way. Uh, up there was a the front, and I was standing back here above the stairs. Uh, my brother, uh, and the God began to work on me. Uh, and I went up, uh, and I tapped him up, uh, reached up to tap him on the shoulder. Uh, and I, he said, what do you want? Uh, and I said, I want to be saved. There was. There was. And I know where the green grass is, brother. I know what it is to be a Christian. And I enjoy being a Christian. And brother, I know that I don't really want to return. Well, let me tell you, if I will be a drunkard or a dope addict or a doctor or whatever, brother, I would not love the Lord anymore because I was saved. Condemnation came on me. I needed to be saved or else I would be lost. And I'm just as thankful. 
Just as thankful, brother, I recognize the green grass, the greenest grass. I recognize this. I don't spend my life as we go on with the message. A lot of us spend your life. In fact, the Pharisees in the Bible, if you want to relate to someone that spent their life, looking back, relate yourself to the Pharisees. Now, those are the bad ones, remember. Jesus said, don't tell me. Don't you Pharisees tell me that you've been in the days of our fathers. You have not done this. Huh? You will not sin. You have not done this. Huh? He said, don't tell me that you will have. Huh? Now, brother, that's exactly what he meant. Huh? Yeah. They will have. Huh? And sometimes, huh? I'm sure all of us have thought, huh? as time, huh? brother, I will like to have been there with Moses when he held the rod up. When they went across, and that'd be okay. I wouldn't mind going back there with Moses if I could come back. But brother, let me tell you, if I would have been back there with Moses, if you would have been in the days of Moses, and you was of the age of 20 years old and after you would have died in the wilderness. You would have died in the wilderness. And even if you was the age of 20 years and under, huh? Uh, brother, let me tell you, uh, what I'm trying to tell you, recognize where the greenest grass is. Uh, I love Moses. Uh, I like to read about Moses. Uh, I enjoy knowing about Moses. Uh, but I don't want to be back. I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not back with Moses if I've been in the age of 20 and up, your word. Huh? I would have died. Huh? Uh, brother, if I would have been back in the days of Moses huh? and I got to leave them through the Bible, huh? if I would have been the, through the days of Moses, huh? I wouldn't have knew the story. My huh? uh, brother, about David and Goliath, huh? I wouldn't have heard that one. My huh? uh, brother, if I would have been in the days of Moses, huh? I wouldn't have read huh? in the book of Esther. Huh? Now, I've preached on this before. If you've never read the book of Esther and realize what it says, huh? go home and read the book of Esther. God saves a whole nation and His name is never mentioned in the book of Esther. That's how great my God is. Brother, just because a king couldn't sleep one night, he got some paper and I'm not going to go through this story, but read how God washes over His people. I'm glad I'm in not of the days of Moses. I will not have known that. I will not have known about David and Solomon. I, I wouldn't have known about them three Hebrews. Boy, us preachers, I love to preach on I almost wish I could preach on the three Hebrews. Uh, uh, children of three Hebrew men. Uh, every time I preach. Uh, uh, brother, that's just good. Uh, when you say, uh, oh, they stood before the king. Uh, and they said, king, we're not careful uh, how to answer you in this manner. Uh, uh, brother, our God, uh, he's able to deliver us uh, uh, from your hands. Uh, but, oh, king, let me tell you something. Uh, if our God don't deliver us. We still ain't going to serve you. I'm glad I got to read that. Oh, Moses didn't get to read that. I'm glad I got to read that. I'm glad I got to read Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. I'm glad I got to read what Malachi said and Micah said and what he requires of us to live. Micah says, show me, old man, what is good and what does the Lord uh, require of thee? Uh, uh, but to love mercy, uh, uh, to do justly, uh, and to walk humbly with thy God. I like that. Yes. Amen. I'm glad that I'm where I'm at. I got to read all the stories, all the beautiful stories about Daniel. Boy, that's good. <laughs> That's good where Daniel went to the lions. That's good. I like that. Uh, brother, or the den of lions, as a lot of people uh, point out. Uh, uh, brother, I'm glad uh, that I read these things. I'm glad I'm living where I'm living uh, and how I'm living. Uh, I'm living in the greenest grass. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been good to talk to Moses. And if I had the opportunity to go back and talk to any of the prophets, it would be good. It would be good, but I had the opportunity to talk through the Spirit huh, to all of them because God has given me a book. Huh, huh, brother, that I can talk huh, uh, to these people. Huh, huh, but we come down. Huh, and if I would have been in the days of Moses, I wouldn't have known about Christ. Huh, huh, brother, about how He died, huh, how He came, huh, and how He walked on earth. Huh, I wouldn't have known about John the Baptist. Huh, how old John said, Repent, huh, ye generation of the Bible. I like old John's preaching. Yeah. You know, you can take old John's preaching 2,000 years ago, give old John the book said, John, we need a message tonight. He said, well, I know one. He said, repent. Bring forth there for fruit. Meet for repentance. That's a good one, John. That's a good one. Every message you preach should be able to be preached throughout eternity. That would be good, wouldn't it? 
Repent, huh, huh, brother. Huh? Oh, John looked in your hearts and he said, Hey, huh? ye generation of vipers, huh? uh, he has warned thee huh? uh, to flee from the wrath to come. Huh? Uh, therefore, bring forth, therefore, huh? uh, fruits, huh? meat for repentance. Don't tell me you go, Abraham. Huh? Don't tell me you were raised uh, Methodist, Baptist, Gospel, Tone, Michael, Presbyterian. Don't tell me that. He said, God is able to these stones to lay, raise up children of Abraham. Huh? Brother old John warned him. Huh? I'm glad I got to read about John. Huh? How old John was good. Huh? Old John was something. Huh? Brother old John saw Christ. Huh? But I got to go beyond that. Huh? I read about Christ. Huh? I read how he died. Huh? And he rose again. Huh? When John was in prison, John. And I always, and God gave me a thought on that one time when I liked it. John sent back to ask. He said, go ask if this is the Christ. To come or should we look for another? Which is kind of puzzling that John would ask because John had confessed him. Yeah. Huh? And I thought two or three things. One, I'm glad he asked because I love the way Christ answered. That gives me a blessing. And another thing I thought old John knew. Huh? How brother, when Christ answered the way that he did, his time was come. He wasn't going to be delivered out of prison. Huh? His duty was fulfilled. Huh? His time had come. Huh? He was going to die huh? in the prison. Huh? He was going to be beheaded. Huh? And the answer came back to John. Huh? He said, you tell John. Huh? How brother, the blind received their sight. Huh? You tell John the deep here. Huh? You tell John. Huh? How brother, the dead are raised. Huh? You tell John the lepers huh? are cleanse. Huh? You tell John the poor have the gospel preached unto him. Huh? And John knew his time was finished. He knew his time was finished. He didn't get to see why I read about. He read about Christ. He said, well, it would be good then to be in the days of Christ. That would be good. That would be good, but let me give you some things. Huh? And it goes along with what Junior huh? I said. Huh? Uh, the things. Huh? Uh, brother, some of the things that happened. Huh? The Word of God began to grow. Huh? Uh, brother, in the book of Acts 5, huh? uh, they stood up when they come in the councils. Huh? And down at the bottom there, they said, if this thing be a God, huh? uh, brother, uh, uh, we can't overcome it. Huh? At least we find huh? that we fight against God Himself. Huh? Now, apparently it was God because they didn't overcome it. Huh? Uh, brother, in Acts 20, huh? it says so mightily huh? through the Word of God uh, and prevailed. Uh, uh, brother, it began to grow. Uh, they began to try to stop it uh, and stop it uh, and stop it, uh, but they couldn't. The green grass. I would like to be in the days of the apostles. I still like living where I am. The days of the apostles. We're always looking back. I want to show you to look up. Huh? Uh, this is in my, uh, according to Bible history a lot. Huh? Uh, the, the twelve apostles. Oh, I would like to be in one of them, we say. Huh? The twelve apostles. Huh? Uh, Andrew. Huh? Now, I'm reading according to Bible history. Andrew. Huh? It said was crucified on an X-shaped cross. Bartholomew, uh, it said, uh, how will die the martyr? Uh, it said, uh, how brother he died the martyr for the Lord? Uh, he was flayed alive with knives. He said, James, uh, uh, brother, he uh, uh, beheaded by Herod. It says the other James uh, was sold. Uh, he was crucified in Egypt uh, and he died. Uh, his, uh, a martyr and his body was sold in pieces. John, the old John. Now that's a good one. John was the one that died in that's natural cause. Apparently 90 some years old and wrote Revelations. Huh? Uh, must have been what the Lord meant when He told Peter, He said, What will it be if it man tarry till I come? Huh? Uh, brother, the only one that was allowed to see huh? uh, the destruction of Jerusalem on down. Huh? Uh, Matthew, huh? he died a martyr huh? in Ethiopia. Huh? Uh, Peter, oh Peter, See, it was crucified upside down. Huh? And it said in this part, I've heard different accounts. Huh? But it says here, Peter requested that he might be crucified head downward huh? uh, because he was not worthy huh? uh, to be crucified like his Lord. Philip, martyred, killed, died behind him. Simeon, Simon, crucified. Thomas, killed with the spear. Days the apostles that you want to be in. Days the apostle, the days across the seas that's now. Huh? But let me tell you what you got. Huh? Uh, brother, uh, uh, a little bit more. Huh? Uh, Bible history. I thought this was a blessing. Huh? Uh, uh, in A.D. 303, huh? uh, there was a man by Dio, a huh? uh, Clinton. Huh? Uh, he was a Roman emperor. Huh? He said, I'll destroy huh? all the books, huh? all the Word of God. Huh? I will destroy it that not one will remain. Not one really man. He was so successful huh, that he thought he got the last huh, of manuscripts, huh, the last books, huh, and he burned them, huh, and he buried them, huh, and he built a monument huh, above them. Huh. But one thing happened. Dear Cleo died. 
or deer die, I mean die. You don't outdo the Lord. And along came another man, uh, uh, Constantine, about 11 years later. Uh, he came along uh, and he removed all the pagan things uh, and put up all Christian symbols of uh, uh, God. Uh, and he began, uh, uh, people began, uh, the Word of God had died. Uh, uh, brother, the book of Isaiah 40 uh, and the book of 1 Peter said, uh, the grass withereth, uh, the fire fadeth, uh, uh, but the Word of God shall stand forever. And that's exactly what it will do. Uh, man will never... Uh, Never, never take away the Word of God out of this world. Amen. The Word of God. Men said there was. Huh? Diocletian was almost successful, he thought. Huh? Destroy all that he found. Huh? Destroy all that was known. But he wasn't successful. You go way on down through history, down uh, uh, quite a few hundred years, up to about 1300 A.D., uh, uh, there was a man by the name of John Wycliffe. Uh, uh, there are English Bibles. Uh, a lot. The, the first Bible uh, that came, the translations, he tried to give one to the common people. Uh, and because he tried to give one uh, to the common people, uh, uh, the people was against him so much, uh, they said, we'll kill him. We'll kill him. This is what people has done for you. I want you to recognize whether you're green as grass. I want you to recognize what you have. John Wycliffe trying to give a Bible to the common people and they sought him out. But the Lord took his life. He died before they found him. He died before they found him, but they hated John Wycliffe so much. Huh? They hated him so much huh? that they dug him up. Huh? They dug his bones up. Huh? When they found where he was buried, huh? they dug him up and they burnt his bones. Huh? And they spread the ashes into the sea, into the river. As one man points out, he said, the river, into the river swift, for it was, and it ran to the river Abel, and it ran to the river uh, Sebron, huh? and that, that ran into the sea, huh? and the sea went to the seven continents. Huh? I believe you cannot destroy the Word of God. Huh? Right. He said the Word of God huh? grew and prevailed. Huh? The grass withered, huh? as I said a while ago, huh? uh, the flower faded, huh? but the Word of God huh? shall stand forever huh? and ever. Huh? There was a man huh? by the name of Botar huh? in 1788. I hardly ever give all these. It's good. 1788. These are good. Bless you. Now I'll confess, I knew about these. My brother preached the message here about six or seven years ago. And I remember him preaching a message on the grass wither and flower fail. I called him up last night in the eye. I said, Don, I got to work tomorrow. I don't have time. I can't remember all your messages. It's been too long. I, I said, give me some high points. I said, they're true. It's okay to do that. Well, I use it for a guidance all the time. You know that? I use that for guidance. And Brother Gary says something. And I wrote down a few things you said. Uh, Gary, I, I like what Gary said one time. He said, no, Brother, if you go to the Kroger's all the time, get you a shopping cart. Shove it around and around Kroger's and never put nothing in it. I'm going to begin to wonder about you. <laughs> I like that, Gary. I'll give you credit for it. That's good. That's good. That's good. What he was saying, of course, if you wasn't here, he was saying, Brother, you come to church, you ought to get filled up once in a while. You ought to try to put something in your shopping cart once in a while. I hate a man with notes. I hate a man that studies the Word of God, don't you? I love that when people are, uh, uh, jump on a man because he studies. Uh, that is plain simple. Don't study. Uh, don't study for a message. Don't study. Don't think about what you're going to preach. How can the devil fool people in the lines? Huh? Uh, brother, don't study. Huh? Will you put man into it? Huh? Uh, but brother, let me tell you something. Huh? I studied today. Huh? I studied this evening. Huh? I studied tonight. Huh? And for Saturday night, huh? I'll begin asking the Lord for a message. Huh? And I'll write down what He gives me huh? because I can't remember everything. I like that. <laughs> Why do people... I'll, I'll take that one more point in case you're still against me. Let's say I'm going to preach Saturday night as the Lord's will. Saturday morning I'll be doing something, pillowing something, yeah. and the Lord gives me a thought or a message. Well, I'm not allowed to study because you all told me not to think about what I'm going to say. I say, so the only thing I can do is say, Lord, take that thought away. Amen. So he goes away. And a little bit later, he gives me a thought again. Sounds like a message. Lord, don't speak to me. I'm not preaching yet. Don't speak yet. Don't. Not yet, Lord. Uh, and I'll wait till 3 o'clock He gives me up. No, Lord. Don't let me study it yet. Uh, but I ain't got the Bible memorized yet. Uh, I ain't got... Now, let me tell you something, preacher. I'll throw this in too. Uh, if you want to know how to prepare a message, uh, the first thing, get yourself out of it. Uh, number two, know what's available. Yeah. Know what's available. 
know what's available. That reminds me of Ahab. Yeah. Well, I go on the greenest grass. And I'll get back to my thought in a little bit. Don't worry. Ahab on the greenest grass. Oh, Ahab looked and Naboth had a vineyard. It was pretty. The greenest grass. Ahab saw the greenest grass. He looked over there. He said, I want that vineyard for my herbs. Just for his herbs, all he wanted it for. He had a bunch of things. Huh? Just for my herbs. Huh? But he, he was sad. He couldn't get it. Huh? He went to buy it. Huh? And old, old Naboth said, no, this is the inheritance huh? of my father's. I'm not going to sell it. He loved it. Huh? It wasn't much to him. He said, I'm not going to sell it. Huh? It was my inheritance. Huh? He liked home. I like home. Huh? That's why I drive 57 miles to work every day. I like home. I enjoy home. He said, I'm not going to sell it. Ahab was sad. He couldn't get to the greenest pasture. Huh? He couldn't get to the greenest grass. Huh? Oh, Jezebel said, no worry, no problem. I can get you that. I can get it for you easily. Huh? She simply sent letters to out the promises. Huh? He said, you come in. We'll honor old Naboth. Huh? He said, when we honor him, huh? you bring in too. Huh? I believe it says, huh? that people, huh? worthless people. Huh? He said, you bring in huh? a couple of them. Huh? And we're going to speak against him. And they did. Huh? And he died. Huh? And they have got the vineyard. Very simple. He got his grass grass. Until God told old prophet about it. He said, Ahab, you got her, son. You got her. But the dog's going to lick your blood. Huh? Oh, Ahab died. Just happened that a man drew a bow back and an arrow back huh? at a distance. Huh? And small oh, Ahab, huh? our brother, and he died. Huh? And they washed out the chariot. Huh? Our brother, huh? and the dogs licked his blood. Huh? Just happened that a man, huh? a baby by the name of Jehu, huh? that came down. Huh? Oh, Jezebel was in the window. Huh? And brother, they threw her out. Huh? And the dogs ate her. They got their greenest grass, they thought. Where was it? Back to the preachers that don't study. <laughs> Lord, don't give me that thought. It was 3 o'clock, wasn't it? Yeah. 3 o'clock, I believe. Lord, don't give me that thought. 4.30 comes. Lord, no, 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 Lord, don't speak to me yet. Don't give me something to think about what I'm going to preach before I get up. 7 o'clock. No, Lord. And I woke up here about 8.30. Ain't off in the book for a week. Told the Lord I didn't want no thought. Okay, Lord, now. It don't sound right to me. It don't sound right. It don't sound right. Now, it's not right when you say, well, I'm going to preach on this tonight because so-and-so's here, and I'll do this, so I'll do this, and I'll do that. Now, you're on there. Huh? But let me tell you something. Huh? God is capable huh? of giving me a message huh? that I will preach in 1989. Huh? If He wants one preach huh? in 1989, He is capable huh? of telling me tonight, huh? Clarence preached this message huh? later. Amen. I have some messages that I waited five years to preach because the Lord said, Preacher, He gave me the thought, huh? and I studied and I I studied, and finally one day he said, Preacher, it was good. It was good. It was good. It's okay to study. Votar in 1788, an atheist, he got pretty big, an atheist, and he wrote a book. And old Votar said, 100 years after my day, 100 years after my day, there won't be a Bible left. Not one. I think it was Votar might have said, You take the Bible from the people. And you take their faith. If he's one, one of those guys I said tonight, and, and that's true. He's right on that. Huh? Brother, you lay this book down. Huh? And you lay this down. You don't ever pick it up. Huh? You don't ever study it. Huh? You don't ever wonder about it. Huh? You don't ever desire to read it. Huh? You don't ever desire to know about it. Huh? Brother, your faith will do, dwindle, I guarantee you. Votar yeah. said, a hundred years after my day, there will be no more. There'll be no more Bibles. He said the only Bible there'll be, there may be one Bible somewhere under glass that we can just go in and, and, and make fun of how the people used to do. Won't be but maybe one Bible left a hundred years after my day. A uh, hundred years uh, after his day. Uh, on the same day uh, in, uh, in England, on the same day, uh, his first edition uh, of his book, uh, he said the Word of God would be stopped. Uh, be no more Bibles. Uh, the same day his book sold for 11 cents. And Great Britain paid $500,000 for some manuscripts to the Tsar of Russia that came from Zion, they thought, from the Moses writing. That's the difference in the Word of God. Huh? Uh, brother, his was worth 11 cents. Huh? His great prediction. Huh? The Word of God huh? was worth $500,000. Uh, the original uh, manuscripts. That's how God, uh, uh, brother, the grass withers, uh, the fire fadeth, uh, but the Word of God shall stand forever until He comes. Until he comes. Amen. If I would have been in those days, 
And what gave me that thought? You heard me preach it a while back, and I'll quit here shortly. Not too shortly. Don't get too excited. About five, ten minutes. <laughs> what gave me that thought was say, boy, I would like to see John the Baptist. I would too. But do you realize how much John the Baptist would like to talk to you? Yes. Do you realize how much John the Baptist, huh? how brother one just seen Christ come down, huh? I just seen him walk down through the air there. Huh? He said, Behold, huh? how the Lamb of God that taken away the sin of the world. Huh? How brother, this is good. This is shouting scripture. Huh? How brother, if John the Baptist could come huh? and he could talk to me, huh? and old John would say, What happened? Huh? I'd say, Well, huh? Christ went about doing a lot of good. Huh? What happened? Huh? They crucified him. What happened? Huh? He rose on the third day. Huh? What happened? Huh? Brother, all can come to salvation. How big John's feet wouldn't hit the ground for a month or two. Amen. Brother, you talk about some preaching. Can you imagine how John would like to talk to you? Can you imagine how John would like to sit in this church tonight and preach? Brother, can you imagine how John would like to read about all the old prophets? Can you imagine how John would like to read about all the prophets after him? And can you imagine how John, how brother, would like to read something that he didn't get to read? How brother, in Revelation, as we close our Scripture, in Revelation, can you imagine, brother, the greenest grass John would have thought we was on? Isaiah prophesied. You can't go through all the prophecies. But he said, I'll build you a tabernacle. Yeah. He said, brother, it will be for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and a place of refuge and a cover from storm and from rain. Yeah. Isaiah said, and John the Baptist prophesied, he said, every valley is going to be brought up, every hill is going to be made low. Right? How brother, the crooked straight, the rough smooth. Right? How brother, they talked about a highway to holiness in the old Bible. Right? How they talked about a time right? in which all could come into the holiness of holies. Right? It would have been good right? to see a priest right? I go into the holiness of holies uh, on the day of atonement. How uh, about when that priest come out? Uh, and you say, now priest, uh, high priest, uh, what did you accomplish? Uh, he say, well, I covered, covered the day of atonement. I covered the sins for another year. I covered the sins. Now I could say, priest, Aaron, there was a man by the name of Jesus that went once into the holiness of holies and he gave his blood. And brother, not only did he cover the sins, uh, uh, brother, he took away the sins. Uh, I'm living in the greatest time. Uh, I have the opportunity uh, and I have uh, the ability uh, uh, to read, uh, uh, to find, uh, uh, to study, uh, uh, to grow, uh, to stay in the house of God uh, under comfortable uh, uh, positions. Uh, and brother, had the greatest. I got the greenest grass. Yes. Amen. Amen. Up until the time. I don't know what will be hereafter. Men beginning to fall away. I know what was before. I missed the church. I just barely, barely can remember just the theater revival when I was a child, not quite old enough. If you're just 50 or 60, which is not old at all, if you're that, you can remember the house in its first glory, how 30, 40, 50, and 60 was saved. That, that was wonderful. Huh? How the numbers have dwindled now. Huh? But let me tell you, I'm still blessed. Huh? How, brother, I still got something that man has never had. Huh? I still, huh? the wisdom, huh? do you know, huh? the wisdom that you have the opportunity of having today. Huh? We're living in the greenest grass on tell. He showed me a pure river. A water of life clear as a crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God of the land in the midst of the tree of it on either side of the river. Uh, her brother was the tree of life. Uh, uh, which bore twelve kinds of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. Uh, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Uh, and there would be no more curse but the throne of God uh, and the Lamb. Uh, and in Revelation 21, uh, he tells about God shall wipe away all tears. Her uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, that is the greenest grass of all. Uh, uh, but for the time being, uh, I cannot get there uh, until I cross uh, uh, that way of death. Uh, uh, but until I do that, uh, uh, brother, I'm perfectly satisfied. Uh, yeah. uh, the only place I can get to. Uh, uh, the greenest grass is not down at Charleston. Uh, uh, down in the city. Uh, or down in the uh, beer joints. Uh, or wherever it may be. Uh, the greenest grass uh, is grace uh, that we're living in uh, in this day and age. Right. We're so blessed that we can see the Bible fulfilling every day more than any other generation that has ever come. More and more. Because when those that begin to name the name of the Lord uh, and they turn away from God, uh, when the churches become wicked, uh, uh, brother, uh, when judgment has always come, uh, we are blessed. Uh, we're living in the fulfillment uh, of the whole Bible. 
We get to read it all. We get to know it all. And we're living in the fulfillment of it all. That is something. That is something. Bow your heads. Oh, yeah.